It's time now for the Sue Ellen Sanders Show here on WPSL. Opinions expressed to those of the program host and guest and not those of WPSL. WPSL does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WPSL. And now, here's Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. And um, we're glad you're here because we have a lot of information to give you today. Uh, uh, every Saturday at 11.05, we're here. If you have an idea for a, a topic and you'd like to uh, be on the air, you can call during the week hours and leave your number with Lynette at uh, 340-1590. And, um, and then I'll get back to you and um, find out what, what you would like to come and talk about. We try to keep the show about community events and nonprofit associations um, to uh, help the community and to give you information about what is out there in St. Lucie County. So along those lines, I have with us uh, Sandra Bogan, who is that outreach manager there's a whole lot you had like two lines worth of titles <laughs> yeah and those yeah. small business cards on the small right. business cards but basically she's the big boss honcho of the oxbow eco center um, in port st Lucie. Uh, are you in if port you pierce so. or port st Lucie? We're in the city limits. Yeah, we're okay, because you're Lucy. right in, over in the city limits. You're right on the other right. side. Kind yeah. of a little bit mixed between White City area and Port St. Lucie. Just across from the Public Shopping Center, yes. actually, at St. Saint, Saint James. And also uh, with us is Ren Underwood, and she is uh, your right-hand guy, gal. <laughs> and she also has a long title that she's going to describe herself. I do. Thank you. I am the Environmental Program and Ecotourism Coordinator for the county. And uh, both Sandra and Ren are here today to talk about the programs that the Oxbow Eco Center is presenting. Sandra, I remember when the Oxbow Eco Center first came to be, when you came on and you had, you know, you basically were a center and people could come um, and uh walk the trails and so forth and beginning with month one you added more and more activities uh you added regular saturday hikes you added bird watching you added kids activities learning activities uh camps um and now you're to the point where you've got something every day and every week it does seem that way. We do a lot of school programs. We do a lot of youth programs, but I don't want people to walk away thinking that the Oxbow is just for kids because we do um, have a, a lot of adult programs, programs in which they can learn about the natural world around them, learn to be more, uh, live simply, live green, um, as well as art. You know, you, you know, there's a lot of ties between art and nature. Um, health so it's it's really a center that's for everybody um, and we do and th we're just starting a new season this is about the same school season is about the same time we start a new you start season. your new season and you start a, a bunch of activities and yes. events that that come up and uh, right around the corner you already have uh, some cool ideas and activities and as you said it's definitely not just for kids because there's bird watching expedi expeditions. There's uh, adult education type events. There's the the melding of art, and uh, there's a lot of exciting things. And and then there are also the trails. I yes. mean, so the trails are open for you to enjoy from sunrise to sunset, even when the building is not open. Important point. That is true. And so. uh, you can't have bikes on the trails. You cannot. But you can have bodies. So you can. You can, you, you can walk. You can run. Uh, you can. And, and I, I mention this because a lot of people will say, well, there's nowhere to walk or run um, really in St. Lucie County that's off the beaten path. But the Oxbow is. And you have uh, a controlled environment and your water fountains are outside. 
<laughs> right. So uh, right. even when the building's not open, if people want to go there and just take a walk, or if you want to, if you have visitors in town and you want them to get a glimpse of what old Florida was like, right. hey, head on over to the Oxbow. Right, because we're right on the St. Lucie River, too. So we have some of the most beautiful trails of all of the preserves and other places in the county. You go through about five different ecosystems um, from scrub habitat to pine flatwoods, and then there's just the rich and verdant um, river trails. So it's only about uh, less than half a mile to get to the river, and it's gorgeous. Uh, in all, we have about three and a half miles of trails, and we have uh, Port St. Lucie police officers and some of the sheriff's SWAT team come out there to um, to train, to get exercise. Our trail along the river is a little bit tricky, so they like that. You know, it's not all flat. And there's some wildlife that you can enjoy. Yes, right. Um, all types of wildlife and probably more than when you first open your doors. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure about that. No, because usually still. Usually wildlife might, you know, sneak away if there's, when it, when a place becomes po populated with people. Yes, but they've been discovered yes. in recent oh, years. Yes, so okay. People visitors have increased, which is great, but of course... Um, that means wildlife is going to be hiding and, and being very um, particular about when they're out on the trails. So they don't want to mix with people. Yeah. But you can still see. I mean, it's still a great place to go birding. Um, you see the occasional otter or alligator, um, even occasional glimpses of a bobcat, things like that. And, of course, our, our little mascot friend, the gopher tortoise, is um, seen fairly regularly. And, uh, you know, other animals. So if you have little kids, too, it's a nice controlled atmosphere to see. Uh, it's butterflies and, yeah. you know, as you said, uh, birds, different type of birds, and uh, to, to learn about how uh, the wildlife feeds on the land. It's a really good opportunity to put, put it all together and, and see how it all works. And then you have, like, the squirrels and the snakes and the uh, other types of creatures that are out there on a regular basis because it's Florida. And they're in your neighborhood too. You know, I know, so, I know. Right? <laughs> um, you know what's the one of the newest sort of things that's going on in the in the neighborhood is the Port St. Lucie rocks and the discovering mm -hmm. rocks. Yes. So that has brought young families together. Mm -hmm. They come out there, people drop off beautiful, fantastically beautiful rocks and then kids come out to look for the rocks so that everybody's really looking it's a little different than when we had our pokemon event which was fantastic and pokemon did a lot for um, young people as well socializing and bringing families together but i love the port st lucie rocks because um, the kids are out there really looking at nature well and that's the thing between the difference between the Pokemon Go yeah. phenomenon yeah. and the, the rocks thing is because Pokemon Go, they were walking along, but they were looking at their phone the Correct. whole time while they right. were walking along. And with the rocks, they have to look. It's a directed, you're not going to spot the rocks unless you're, you're looking out beyond your phone. And it's teaching them observation skills. So they're going to see so many more things out there while they're looking for rocks, which is great. Right. Well, that's really cool. So you, let's, let's get right into some of the special events that you have coming up and first and foremost uh on monday just a couple days away um you have an eclipse watching party and uh of course everybody's been hearing about the eclipse and whether you're an adult or whether you've got kids it, you may want to go and watch together with other people um, in a safe atmosphere, and uh, let's find out what's going to be going on on Monday. Yes, thank you. So um, on Monday from 2 to 3.30 p.m., uh, the Oxbow is welcoming community members to come out and watch the eclipse with us. Um, there won't be any formal uh, presentations or anything like that, but we will have, as long as supplies last, we'll have the special solar viewing glasses available for folks. Um, and uh, so we're hoping some people will come out and, and catch this uh, historic event with us. And, you know, like I said, it's kind of like when you're watching a beautiful moon come up, you know, you want to share it with other people. Mm -hmm. This will be an opportunity to share it with other people so people can come out to the Oxbow. And, you know, as you said, you have 
uh, some of the, the special glasses. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I can't urge enough responsibility. I, you know, in a, a normal situation, you would not look straight at the sun anyhow. Right. Yep. So why would you if there was an eclipse? You know, it's just curiosity, I guess. Well, but this is the opportunity, though, to remind people not to do that. Yes, yes, right. it is. And so I, the the issue with the eclipse becomes, you know, w- you don't look at the sun on an everyday basis because it's so bright, and you're out in a, in the daylight, and when you're out in the daylight, your pupils get smaller, right? Right. So your pupils are nice and small, and if you think about it, when the moon crosses in front of the sun it gets darker and your pupils start opening up so that when the moon passes the sun that's the danger point okay because your pupils are wide open and you're looking at the sun and you don't realize you know and just a just a piece of the sun is peeking out but the amount of uv rays and the brightness will affect your eyes and you Mm -hmm. may not see the effect of that immediately it it would be it can be a more long-term issue that reveals itself later so that's important for people to understand the glasses um, we have the specialized glasses people who come out will have their very own where you know they can take them home um, as long as for the next last, eclipse, <laughs> which is going to happen in 2024. Yeah, so, so it's not all that far years. away. Yes, yes, yes. Which is amazing. That's that's very unusual to have it that soon in in, in our part of the world. Um, so people just need to realize that, y- and if they come on Monday for the watch party, they may have to share their glasses. So if we have more people than we have glasses. Please come with a generous spirit. <laughs> yes. Share your glasses. Or or come and bring your own glasses because I believe yes. Walmart and the gas stations and a yeah. bunch of places have the glasses. Yeah. And, and you have to look for the little logo that says it's approved. Right. Um, There's a, an ISO number they should have on them. 123-12-2. One, two, three, one, two, dash two. One, two, three, one, two, dash two. That's ISO. Correct. But you should see the ISO number. Um, but they're pretty inexpensive, yes. uh, and uh, if if a regular retailer like Walmart is selling them, then they're they're legit. They're not right. the fake ones. And who would sell fake glasses? I mean, what people won't do for money, right? Right. right. That's kind of scary. So so that c- that's coming up right around the corner on Monday. But you also have some other things that are coming up. I love this idea, advice from an artist. Um, So advice from the artist is when, uh, if you have some kind of project that's coming up and you need uh, extra help with it, uh, the procession of the species, actually that's coming Okay, let's get it, let's get it straight. We're gonna let Ren explain <laughs> it because she's got all the information in front of her. And uh, so first, we really need to talk about Saint Lucy's procession of the species celebration because that is what the advice for the artist is all about. So you've got it, Ren. Absolutely. You you hit it. I'm glad you you uh, jumped right on that advice from an artist, though, because those are coming up. Yeah, well, but that's what I was thinking. That's coming first. Yes. But actually. Right. And it is because those are lead up and, and it's an important lead up. And um, it all boils down to this great new um, signature event that we're developing here in St. Lucie County. Um, the Environmental Resources Department, which Oxbow is a part of, and the St. Lucie Tourism is teaming up with the Indian River Lagoon Science Festival, which is an ongoing event in downtown Fort Pierce. It's going to be on October 14th this year. And that's a Saturday, and it's a free event. And what we're doing is we're bringing a component, um, something kind of colorful and magical um, to add to the, all the science of, of that event. We're kind of bridging the art and arts and nature and science for that event. So we're doing something called the Procession of the Species. And the Procession of the Species is this lively, musical, colorful parade, if you will, of folks from all walks of life. 
and of all ability levels to uh, don a costume or create a sculpture or make a puppet of any kind of their favorite species. So plant, animal, fungus, it doesn't matter. Um, a lot of fungi. A lot of fungi. <laughs> might be lots of fun guys out there, right? And, um, and to jump in the parade. And so um, it's just a fun way to get creative, to learn about a species, right? So we're, we're spinning this with the school district as well. And inviting schools to get involved, and the superintendent's very supportive of that. And it's a great way to do some project-based learning for, for children in the schools. They can learn about their animal. They can learn about their range, the behavior, the adaptations. Um, and then, of course, create their costumes and get to become their animal in the procession. And, of course, this fits right in with either a STEM or a STEAM project. It's per it fits perfectly. Yes. And yeah. that's what the superintendent I, he got it, you're right. Yeah. He, he understood that right away, and um, it's been very supportive. Um, and of course, we're spinning it um, to anybody. You know, schools are wonderful. We're very uh, excited that they're going to be involved, but we certainly want to invite anybody. You can come as an individual and get involved, or you can grab your favorite, you know, club members or team members or scout troop um, and get involved as a group as well. So that's going to be on Saturday, October 14th. And that's going to be part of the Indian River Lagoon Science Festival that's, that's downtown. Correct. So what you're going to be doing at the Oxbow is beginning um, on August 26th and running weekly until October 7th. Are those all on Saturdays? Yes, they're all Saturdays, and they run from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. And what we're doing is we're partnering with local artists who are very excited about the procession event, of course. And um, we're going to have um, a few artists on staff, basically, at the Oxbow each of these Saturdays. Um, and we'll be working on our own projects. But what will, be, what will uh, happen is that those artists will be available to folks who just want to drop in and say, hey, I heard about the procession, I'm interested, but, you know, I have no clue where to start. Or I have this idea, but I need some guidance. And can I just point out that you could get a two-four off this because Halloween is coming up right around the corner. Brilliant. And mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely, you could do the Indian River Lagoon Science Festival, make a costume for that on October 14th, and you only have to hold on to it for a couple weeks longer and use it for Halloween. You got it. And have a very unique, unusual, uh, natural costume that, you know, maybe something that you want to save or adapt uh, for years to come. That's right. And we're encouraging everybody to use um, recyclables, recycled materials, repurposed items, um, so that it's a green event, right? Instead of going out and buying all new materials, if you can recycle uh, the components in your construction, then that's all the better. Whenever I, I'm really bad or really good, depending on how you look at it, uh, about art projects, and whenever I have an art project, the first place I head is the garage <laughs> to see what is left over from other art projects because uh, my daughter for years was and she still is all crafty but she doesn't live at home anymore but she's left dribs and drabs of her <laughs> craft supplies in the garage and so i go in there and i you know find you know the stones that you use in the fish tank and mosaic tiles from a different project right. and paints left over from another project <laughs> and sea glass and shells and all right, sorts right. of, of other things that, that I, you can find and put together or especially paper um, or old books um, that you can use because, you know, I'm kind of a, a book fanatic um, my daughter, one year for my birthday, she saw a thing where you make an old book um, into a clock. And so she oh, picked cool. up a book at the thrift store and made it and put the clock mechanism and, and made it into a clock because she thought that would be very cool. Uh, but what she didn't even realize was, I can't remember the exact name of the book, but it was the title of the book was something about all the ends of our lives or something like oh, that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yes, uh, a lot of things are, 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 or things that you can pick up at garage sales. Yes, you may absolutely. not have, you know, a garage full of stuff and pieces of things, material that's left over. Mm -hmm. um, Thrift stores are great. Mm -hmm. Great resource. Mm -hmm. Great, great way. And and if you come to the advice from an artist and see the type of things that they're working with, that right. will give you some ideas. Exactly. We're going to have some example costumes and props on site for people to come and see. Um, and then, of course, they can also get um, ideas on our website for the event, and that is com. So you can look at St. Lucie Pro Procession dot com and get some ideas before okay. you even start. So you Correct. can come and get your advice from the artist and already have some of the materials to start right. with. Right, and it's free to participate. Uh, we do ask that each participant just bring uh, two non-perishable food items for the food drive this time of year that the county does. Uh, but otherwise, it's all free. And... Um, also, the only thing we require other than that is that um, you fill out a registration form so we know who's coming and sign a, a release of liability, of course. Uh, liability for the advice from an artist? No, or no, for the, for the procession. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait a minute. Not from the advice. Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> what are they going to do? Like cut off somebody's arm to use it on a craft project? Yeah. Like, I was a little surprised. <laughs> it's so hard to describe by uh, over the radio, mm -hmm. but... For people to imagine what this is all about, if you could think about, and there's videos and photos like Ren said on our website, but if you think about a 20 foot tall peacock um, that's operated with six people. Oh, but wait a minute, we have sticks. TV now. Oh. <laughs> Can we hold that up to the TV? There's pictures, right? <laughs> Th those are the pictures. That's, those the are pictures. some actual costumes. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, right, TV. Right, well, And yeah. what's hard to de describe, too, on the radio is that it's a very musical event. Right. So people are walking along, but some of the groups that come may be drumming or some may be playing um, instruments. We're going to try and get marching oh, bands involved. Okay. Um so that it's just very lively and colorful, and it's really a, a delightful event. And if you're looking closely right. at those pictures, there's a face in the middle of that sunflower. <laughs> right. It's right. so cute. That's and really. That, and that flamingo, so, uh, I believe what she did, this is all paper mache. I believe what she did is she took one of those exercise balls, those giant exercise balls that you stretch on or yeah pregnant women use um and she essentially had it blown up you know and then she paper mache it and then she cut it and that created the body of the flamingo i never right? would have thought yeah. that that is really cool and ren's favorites are the mechanical ones so some mm -hmm. people like uh people even with physical disabilities can participate in this parade we had a uh there's a picture on our website i believe of a, a man in a wheelchair who just decked out his wheelchair and had a giant sea turtle above him shading him yes he'd been he'd been this is not an original thought of ours the procession of the species originated in olympia washington um years ago and just it's really an and a, an event that brings the community together um it's a celebration it creates that cohesiveness this guy had been in all of the processions and then health wise his health deteriorated and when he was in a um when he was in a wheelchair that didn't stop him he was still going to be part of it so and we in ren i think you put some videos of that procession up on our website too you have groups of older women they got together prior to the procession and learned a little dance and created little woodpecker costumes um you know little ki bumblebee kids with a beehive in front of them you can get very very creative with and this. get some ideas just from looking at the video and the pictures yeah. on your website mm -hmm. so yeah. the magic website what is the magic <laughs> website the magic website for the procession of the species is st lucie procession.com no dots or dashes however they can of course go mm -hmm. to the oxbow website if that's, that's easier for them which is oxbow oxbowico.com <laughs> and that will link you to what we're talking about is the procession of the species Correct. celebration. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just to get the dates in a, in the row, uh, the pr procession of the species 
celebration is October 14th, and on seven Saturdays previous to that, at the Oxbow Eco, you'll be able to uh, get advice from the artist on your costume. Yes and go and you know what you don't have to just stop by there and get advice on your costume while you're there you can enjoy um take a, a walk along the the trail uh and you have you have certain saturdays that the bird watching expeditions take off right it, but not in the T summer. Not literally take off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not in the summer? Okay. Not in the summer. Okay. And and that starts to pick up then a little bit later in November. the year. November. Yeah, November. Yeah. Okay. So so what else can they do when they come to well, check as, out? Well, as far as the advice from the artists, they can even bring materials with them because it's going to be creative days. You can actually work while you're there. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that, that might sounds be good. nice. Yeah, that sounds really good. Right. All right. So um, other than the uh, preparing for the procession of the species and the procession of the species itself, what else is going on during this time? So, Or what are we leading into yeah. as uh, the season progresses? Right. So, again, we were talking about kicking off a whole new season, and we have been brainstorming with some talented staff and volunteers that we have at the Oxbow. Um, this year, we're going to be adding a few elements, things like um, Citizen Science Day, so that citizens, young and older, can be involved in actual on-the-ground science or testing water or counting frogs or listening to frogs uh, all of this is to help build the database so that we can understand what's going on in our own backyard um, wait a minute whose database the database in your head or, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, or oxbow's database well it yeah. varies the, yeah it, it does vary we're yeah. partnering with the indian river lagoon aquatic preserves uh group they're under dep they're in charge of seven aquatic preserves including some spoil islands from the Banana River all the way up north and several um, here in St. Lucie County. So we'll be providing some data to them, water quality data, also microplastics. You're familiar with that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because uh, you, there was a great teacher at St. Andrews that started a microplastics project in which citizens collect water and it goes through a sieve and then they um, they can look under a microscope and you can determine the types of plastics, the amounts of almost microscopic plastics that are in our water. Every body of water that we have from canals to creeks to rivers to, to the, the open ocean. ocean. <laughs> right. I actually had a student do a speech. She had to do an informative speech and she did her informative speech on microplastics. Right. Right. which it was very informative because a lot of, of the kids in English right. class hadn't heard of them. Uh, so uh, this is something else that is a learning activity, right. but is also a fun and scientific activity, and it's for uh, people of all ages to be a part of it. The, you can also get... Um, you, you also partner with, like, the Florida Master Naturalist Program coastal systems for certification uh, and through the Oxbow Eco Center and yeah. you offer classes for that. We do, yeah. Um, we've got a couple of our staff members are instructors and um, as well as another um, ERD staff member and we offer um, one of the, the core modules, their 40 hour certification courses, we offer one a year. And then we partner with other um, instructors as well and assist in some of the um, special topic courses. Uh, the Florida Master Naturalist Program is a great program that's developed by the University of Florida um, Institute for Food and Agricultural Sciences, or IFAS. And it's been around, gosh, I want to say about 20, 20 years Getting now. Close. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's an award winning program, and many other states um, have um, um, emulated it and started their own master naturalist programs. Um, but um, it's very popular. You do have to be 18 years old to take the courses. And um, the core modules are, I believe, $225. So they're, they're not inexpensive courses, but of course, it's a professional certification. And we get people from um, 
uh, diverse backgrounds. You That's know, school teachers, ask, who, uh, retirees. Who would that be useful to? It's, it's useful to a lot of people. I mean, teachers, we'd love to even see more teachers uh, come in and take it because they can take all that new knowledge back into the classroom. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of... Um, a lot of retirees and some of those folks have had a background in the natural sciences and this is a refresher or maybe they just um, they they spent their all their lives up north and they're trying to learn specifically mm -hmm. about Florida yeah we also get folks who um, did something completely different for their career maybe they were an accountant maybe they were a salesperson but they always in the back of their mind had this little you know this little voice that really wanted to get in touch with nature um, those are those are always my favorite students because <laughs> they're learning curve they soak is, it up oh they my are, gosh their yes. learning curve is huge they're all about it they just soak it all up and they're so grateful like they just love it you know you can just see it the light bulbs coming on um and as an instructor of course that's what you know uh lights you on fire and keeps you going um but yeah fantastic course we do have a coastal module coming up however unfortunately it is full um but folks who are interested you know should keep an eye out on the oxbow website or they can even go to masternaturalist.org to learn more about the Florida Master Naturalist program. So if people go to the Oxbow website, uh, what else are they gonna find there as far as links, uh, things that they need to find out about? We are just updating our website with all of the new programs that are coming up. So, um, of course, you know, like I said, we're aligned with the school, so teachers can look at our field trip opportunities and schedule one throughout the year. Uh, or we can, they can come out to the Oxbow, or we can come into the classroom as well. So that's a good one. Um, and we're working on our calendar, so you'll see more. Um, uh, dates and times and opportunities to register you know we always have our story time it, uh, it's called tale, uh, tales and trails it's a story time and it's followed up by just a little walk in the garden or down the boardwalk so that's a great one every Saturday we still are going to be doing our crunch and munch which is your opportunity to help us feed our our animal ambassadors from uh, turtles to snakes to our we even have a bearded dragon just because everyone loves her <laughs> um, and when I say help I use that word loosely uh, <laughs> watch <laughs> you do it watch, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> watch and learn like, like and stand learn. in the background and go Eat, eat, <laughs> eat, eat. <laughs> yes, they love the bearded dragon yeah. because, of course, you know, it turns its head so it sees the food with one eye and then the big tongue comes out and grabs it. So she's good that's at a putting thrill. on a show. Yes, yeah. she is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, um, nice eating activity. Yes. Um, and then you have, do, do you still have um, other uh, events that come on your calendar that you partner with? Uh, to go out and uh, you know you you said the bird watching tours don't start up until November 1st but right. um, I, I know we just got through a summer of activities and yes Sandra do you remember when you were first on the radio show and we were talking we, we were saying yeah you should do summer camps right <laughs> and um, at that point you hadn't even started doing summer camps right. and now you have it Talk about it, uh, raised to a level of expertise. There's something for tons all ages for your yeah. summer camps. Yeah, tons of them. So we didn't, this year was really fun, right, Ren? I think we did eight camps this summer, <laughs> and we just had a planning meeting today, and we tentatively have nine scheduled for next summer. That's great. I'm, I walked out of the room early. <laughs> I'll have to get back with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I know people... Uh, whose grandchildren come to visit them and they plan their grandchildren's visit around your camps. Yes, oh, you awesome. are right. Yeah. Yes. Like, what am wow. I going to do with a eight year old? Um, <laughs> well, and our camps are day camps. They're not overnight camps. Right. So. And they're day camps and they're informative. It's a learning thing, but it's also exciting. And then it gives them something to talk about with grandma or mom and dad when they get home. Right. You know, right. and it they're not you don't have to be there from eight o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night. It's not a instead of babysitter right. camp. It's an enhanced uh, activity type camp mm -hmm. and and that's what um, the people that I know whose kids come down here why they plan it around there because then they've got something to chat about 
Um, and boy, the kids, you know, when kids get home from school, unfortunately, a lot of times you say, so what did you do at school today? Nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no matter learn? what they did, nothing. <laughs> right. And you know, they, you know they learned a lot, and you know they're getting a lot, and you know they have the most wonderful teachers and the best classes and, and great activities. But it's not always something that they carry back. But when they go to a camp like an Oxbow camp mm -hmm. where there's activity and nature and excitement and learning of science, sneaky learning, the type <laughs> of learning that they don't, know that right. is good learning that right. they think is just fun it's learning fun, right they want to talk about it yes. they come home and they talk about it yes and our art can't i mean again we do uh, a variety so it's animals it's outdoor adventures uh, we did a little science with bio mm -hmm. eyes this year but we also have an engineering camp we have the lego robotics oh that camp. one i didn't know about right that's awesome and our art camps are absolutely amazing the kids go home every day with so many art pieces all different kinds of art pieces and they usually leave a piece of themselves behind as well. So part of the art camp is a project that enhances the oxbow. So then the next time they come, they see, they own it. It's their oxbow. Yeah. Yeah. They point it out. They show their little signature. Um, so when you and walk in, it's really the, unique pieces. Yes. Like you, you won't go to any other nature center and see that piece. It's unique to Oxbow. Right. And we get many visitors um, that are just uh, thrilled with those parts of our you mm -hmm. know, exhibit hall. Mm -hmm. That's what draws their attention a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, how long has the Oxbow been around now? It's been. It has ten been. Years? More it than that. It has been 16 years. <laughs> Wow. So we opened in October of 2001. You and I probably yes. had our first interview we a did. little before then. Yeah, we, I remember our first interview was before you opened yes. and when it was just an idea. Right. And when you were telling me about the animals that were in my own backyard, and I wasn't thrilled to hear no, about weren't. some of them. I remember that <laughs> discussion. <laughs> She used to go jogging out at the Oxbow, and I think she ran into one of those yes, yes, scaly I, yes, friends. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I do uh, still go jogging outside, um, and I come down the trails um, occasionally, too. And I have seen alligators, um, not just at the Oxbow, but outside. Right. right. Like along St. James. I mean, usually they're they're not a frequent sighting and they're usually closer to bodies of water but one time um i was running there with my friend and i saw a bunch and it was right outside the where the expo is and we were running along the sidewalk and i saw a bunch of cars pulling off to the side and somebody said oh there's an alligator up there and i thought oh yeah it's probably like a one or two foot alligator <laughs> and uh then as we were running we saw how big the alligator was, and so we. I tried to cross the street. My running partner didn't want to cross the street because she's one of those people who wants to be right on top of things and look. And then she turned to me and she said, Sue Ellen, how fast do you think we have to be to outrun an alligator? And I said, well, I don't know about you. I just have to be faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good answer. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, but it was... It was a full-size alligator that was out there. And I, yes, I know it's Florida. And yes, we have big cockroaches and we have snakes <laughs> and we have alligators and we have all sorts of wildlife, wildlife and we coexist peacefully with them. Right. Um, but is it alligators or crocodiles that you, you're supposed to run sideways to avoid? Do you remember? That's sort of a myth, anyway. Okay, just, yeah. <laughs> just so you know, just get the heck out of there. Yes. Okay, <laughs> and avoid getting that close to them in the in the first place, right? Yeah, and just observe any wildlife. Just observe them from a respectful distance, and and for the safety of the wildlife too. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but before we move on, mm -hmm. just Sue Ellen always does this. She invites everybody to come to the Oxbow, and then she's like, and then the alligators. You know, they're <laughs> fifteen feet long out there. I didn't. See say 15 <laughs> feet long no the the alligator sightings are few and far between yes. and if you're lucky you'll see a bobcat 
Um, yes. But not all that frequently. You Correct. will see the regular creatures, and you will see a ton of birds and butterflies right. and a, a ton of uh, environmentally friendly um, activities yes. that, that can help you become a part of nature and be out there. And I just wanted to, you know, take a moment to um, just to let people know that knowledge is power. And so a lot of times it's the unknown that we're afraid of. Mm -hmm. So if you understand, you know, um, what's out there, what you should be cautious about, you know, how best to walk through the woods and stay safe and also find your way back. Of course, we have trails that are pretty well marked. You're going to find your way back. Um, alligators have the brain that's a tiny little brain. They're generally see um, you're back to alligators naturally now. Naturally <laughs> afraid of, of people. They have okay. a natural fa fear okay. of people. However, when people feed them, they lose that fear. So, um, so our smart. friends out there in the world do not feed alligators. Yes, um, and they so essentially they're and they're also not crocodiles. They're not aggressive where they generally will either come out of the water to get you because you're just too big to eat in one dinner um, and even when they're on the bank sunning themselves they generally ignore you they're not going to run after you Unless crocodiles are in a whole different story yeah. oh really crocodiles and we don't have them so that's good we do well you have uh, the american crocodile but they're it's in the keys south. way farther south yeah, okay. when i say we i they're mean in danger. here in our immediate okay. right. so, area so what are th just just curious what are the american crocodiles doing in the keys that's their native habitat. It's part ah, of their native range. They're, really? um, I haven't looked at the status recently to know exactly what their status is, but they've at least historically been very, very endangered, highly endangered. They're protected. Right. Um, they are a cousin to our American alligator, and they are um, prefer saltwater. So right. they're in the bays and estuaries down there. Okay, mm -hmm. but they're they're not here. And and you know like like you said, you know, it's not like you're frequently going to see an alligator, but you will, you will probably see or hear, you know, like snakes and bugs and butterflies and birds and squirrels and rabbits. Right, right, rabbits, right. Rabbits, yeah. Yep. Um, now, are pets allowed on the trails? They Speaking are. Speaking of yes. great question. rabbits, yeah. <laughs> they we, are. We do ask that, um, you know, you are allowed to bring your, your dog with you on the trail. Um, however, it is required that they are always on leash and that they're cleaned up after. And this was actually a little bit of a trick question here because <laughs> I bring my dog on the trails all the time. Now but she I wants thought to I would ask the question <laughs> to make sure that it was okay before I mentioned that right. I bring my dogs on the trails. <laughs> but they are always leashed. and Good. they Thank um, you for that. Yes, and, and we always bring a bag with us. Right. Um, and, and you actually have little garbage cans to put your animal waste in. So. Right. right. And there's little dispensers for the plastic bags as well. So if you, you forgot yours, um, right. then we, we have them there at the trailheads. We do have an issue. We do have issues with people. You know, they'll have them leashed while they're in the parking lot, and then they go around the corner and they unleash their dog. And there's many reasons that you don't want to do that. First of all, just for this protection of our visitors from small visitors to tall visitors who also have animals P some people have fear and mm. panic attacks and if your dog is extra friendly or extra not so friendly um, it's just a dangerous situation um, and then secondly there are there are snakes and other things that um, your dog can be in danger and you know how dogs are they're inquisitive yeah. so they're going to go right up to yeah. that diamondback rattlesnake and they could get hurt or they could get killed so um yeah something and, and i notice about dogs is they don't know bufo no. toads either no true <laughs> yeah. right. and um you can't pick up after them if, so then you're really uh you're really breaking the rules and so if we catch a sue ellen <laughs> uh, never, I never bring the dog there without the leash because that's really what I was thinking too. Is if the dog wanted to chase after a snake, then I'd have to go get the dog, yes. and then I'd have to see the snake right. up close, and I would save my dog from a snake, but it wouldn't be a pretty picture. Right, and I don't want to kick you off the site, but no. you know we no. do have issues with it, and so we would have yes. to take those yeah. measures. Yeah. 
So, yeah. well, that's good. It's good yeah. to know that all this time that I've been taking the dogs on the trail, <laughs> that, <laughs> You're legal. that I was doing the right <laughs> thing. But no bikes. C- and I happen to know no bikes because we were riding our bikes on the trail and we're told no bikes. Oh, okay. And so we parked the bike yeah. and locked it up by yeah. the the boardwalk there and then walked out there. So it's kind of nice if you live pretty close to the the. Yeah. Oxbow, um, it's a nice little bike ride over yeah. there. Then mm-hmm. you can leave your bike locked up and go right. take a walk and then come back and ride your bike home. Yes. And the reason for that is just we do have uh, heavily used trails and, um, you know, sometimes there's whole classes of children and things like that and people with strollers. And we were just concerned about bikes coming around corners quickly and having collisions. So mm-hmm. it's a safety issue. But strollers are allowed. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in wheelchairs. And yeah. we have a fat tire wheelchair if mm-hmm. you have somebody who can't really do the hike but loves to get out in nature. So you have wheelchair loaner. Mm-hmm. I have a loaner. Yeah, that what a great idea. Yeah. I mean they they still have to be pushed. It's not yeah. motorized. Yeah. But, but but still. Oh, if you've ever we had a woman who was uh, it was Dottie Hall. She was instrumental in the Oxbow Eco Center uh, early on when it was first just a thought. And she had MS, and she was in a wheelchair. And I'll tell you, she we worked together for. I mean, she did. She wasn't employed with us, but we. Um, she was a great volunteer. And I didn't realize, but about five years into it, I said, Donnie, I want to take you. I got the new fat tire wheelchair. Mm-hmm. I want to take you out back. It was a thrill. She only saw pictures of it. She'd never, She'd never been out there. It. Yeah. And it was fantastic. So think about that. If you have somebody who's housebound, mm-hmm. you know, um, it doesn't take much and you don't even have to go far to That's feel right. deep in the woods. It's that connection yeah. with nature. Yeah. I, and I hadn't really thought about that either, but it, it's so true because yeah. once you're limited to a wheelchair, you know, any excursion is more difficult and you know if you have one that specialized to go out on those trails right. you know that's really terrific it mm-hmm. is that's wonderful and very inclusive you it know, is. that's what we're really about yeah well because it is a, a family affair and as we get deeper into the season and p- more people have uh, folks who come and visit and you know you go to things like the manatee center and the uh, Smithsonian and yep. different places savannas. out in, in, and the savannas and put the Oxbow Eco Center on your list too because um, it you know as you said you go out on the trail to the uh, St. Lucie River and see what old Florida is if um, you are reading any of those old books that are are set in old Florida and you want to imagine what it's like yeah. you know you yeah. can easily see um, what or you know, you know maybe you're even reading Huck Finn and right. you want to imagine right. what it was like <laughs> when he came down the water um, w- on a raft. You know you can kind of uh, imagine that. Uh, I know that you have different events where you also have partnered with artists in yes. the past, yes. and that is always really cool too yeah. because then you have, you know, you have all this beautiful nature, and a lot of times people will just go out there and enjoy it. Um, or they might take photographs, but uh, you can also come out there and you know set up your artist easel and just mm-hmm. and I've come yes. upon artists mm-hmm. who are just sitting there and they're painting or they're drawing and sketching. Love it. Yeah, I wanted to share before we run out of time too. Um, you were just talking about the history. We have we have a group of fantastic volunteers so I I wanted to make sure that people knew that if they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves and give back to the community we have lots of opportunities from being a meter greeter or uh, you know just helping us in any way imaginable but we have this one volunteer who created he's in the process it'll be done in about a week or two of a Florida history trail and again I'm thinking teachers Mm -hmm. fourth grade teachers it's a trail it's a short trail it has its own brochure it has 12 stops and it it makes you do just what you said imagine old Florida oh that that's cool see I could have thought of that yeah Yeah, I'll have to come up with another yeah (laughs) Uh, and uh the volunteers I'm glad you mentioned the volunteers because you really have a small staff 
uh, that is uh, paid staff, and you all have very long titles on your <laughs> business cards and do a lot of work, but yes. you couldn't do it all without your volunteers. That's right. correct. They're, they're a part of every aspect of the Oxbow, and they're, it's like big family. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We just want to do more, and so that you know that's the thing. We just want to keep having a bigger and bigger and bigger impact on our community, positive impact, and bring more people together. So, and certainly where you're located is right in the center of St. Lucie County. Wherever um, you live, your box was probably only 15 minutes away. Uh, so let's describe where the Oxpo is again, give a phone number and uh, your contact information and website again. Okay, so we're, like you said, centrally located. We're about a mile and a half south of Midway Road on 25th Street, also known as St. James, depending on which side of that road you live on. Um, so the address is actually 5400 Northeast St. James Drive, Port St. Lucie, and the phone number is 772-785- 5833 and probably the best way for people to really just get some information and figure out where we are is to go to our website which is oxbo eco o x b o w e c o dot com and you can also link there from the st lucie county website right so you'll That's you correct. can link uh right there and and you have other really big special occasions like earth day yes. and okay. um, a, a lot of fun events to look through and, and the best way to find out about that is to be checking on the website do you have uh email uh do you, that you send out regular to pe regularly to people as well we do we have a, a friends uh list so email. you can sign up for that yes and they can just go to oxbo at st lucie co dot org co is in county awesome well sandra bogan and uh ren underwood have been my guests from the oxbo eco center you've been listening to the sue ellen sanders show we'll be back here next saturday with more have a great week the sue ellen sanders show saturday mornings at 11.05 on wpsl the talk of the treasure coast <laughs>